Good afternoon, everyone. It was great to be today in the Security Council meeting, and uh, it was a real show of solidarity, a real show of solidarity with those to whom uh, a fundamental threat from uh, North Korea is dedicated. And it was uh, very clear that any kind of appeasement, any kind of weakness, is uh, no way forward. In the same way, the whole narrative on North Korea is for me very similar on the narrative on Russia. It's just about breaking international law. It's about sanctions. It's about hostages. So the difference is uh, just basically in scale. We are talking about one big rock state, Russia, and the smaller rock state, basically a Russian client, North Korea. And uh, I wanted also to share with you the sense of uh, our membership in the Security Council, because it's uh, now coming to an end. And it came in a very difficult uh, period of Ukrainian history, because uh, my country is subjected to brutal armed aggression by Russia, a permanent member of the Security Council. And it's both about uh, military aggression, conventional aggression, and hybrid aggression. Did this aggression hinder our efficiency as a council member? Not at all. We believe we have established ourselves as a reliable, responsible, efficient, result-oriented, and principal council member with a truly global profile. And now we can show basically our deliverables, our results, because uh, we have brought to the Council's agenda of the issues about hybrid wars and hybrid warfare. It was never before on the agenda of the Security Council. We've brought to the agenda of the Security Council the issue of conflicts in Europe, which was the last time on this agenda focused on the Balkans. And we were able to deliver on the resolution about the threats to critical infrastructure. So fundamentally, we believe it was uh, a very important run. And because it's my last uh, ministerial meeting, I simply would like to thank uh, everyone, all our friends, all our allies, and uh, our team working there. And uh, we, will keep, we will keep fighting. I believe the issue of Ukraine the issue of uh, values, the issue of independence and our fight for values is definitely on the agenda of the United Nations. So thanks again, and uh, it would be a special pleasure to work with uh, every one of you further. Uh, Mr. Minister. Do you expect, uh, I know you're meeting with the Secretary General later today, do you expect to discuss your peacekeeping ideas and have you, you spoke, you spoke with Poland, have you met with the other incoming Security Council members and sounded them out on your ideas? Yes, definitely. I met already with almost all incoming security members. Uh, let's mention Poland or the Netherlands. And they are definitely briefed about the current situation. They are briefed about Russian intentions to maintain Russian protectorate in the occupied Donbas and trying to put up the idea of the peacekeeping mission somehow to be kind of occupational administration. And my answer to that occupational administration is already there. So we need real mission covering the whole territory of the occupied Donbas, uncontrolled part of the Ukrainian-Russian border, and of course, having really robust and bold mandate about disarmament, about containment of weapons, about uh, verifying pulling back of forces, including Russian forces, mercenaries, all kind of weaponry, and of course preparing Donbas for the future elections. So the formula is very simple. Russia out, the international community in. 
but uh, it's just about Russia who would like to retain the situation as it is and to try to use Donbass because they don't, don't care about Donbass as a, as a tool for further destabilizing Ukraine and for further destabilizing Europe. But I will definitely discuss in detail this issue with the Secretary General and uh, with my colleagues. Negotiations uh, with look, the Ukraine fun and fundamentally, we, have, we are on the same line. We have a clear draft of our mandate. Everything is there. We have already prepared it. It's, it's only about Russia who keeps blocking this mandate and who keeps blocking the whole situation going forward. Now we have absolutely the same line with the United States with uh, Normandy countries, uh, Germany and France representing uh, the European Union. And we need to push Russia further in the sense of sanctions, in the sense of solidarity, in the sense of additional tool, because the alternative for this mission and the alternative for the international community to come in is simply freezing up the situation under Russian conditions, and it will be a ticking bomb, not only for us, for Ukraine, but for everyone. Well, the negotiations have taken a step back, according to the State Department. So what are the, what's the current status? Oh, negotiations are ongoing. The problem with that is that Russia keeps blocking the progress. The simple way of putting this mission or on, uh, in the occupied Donbass is to have it in the whole territory of Donbass and the uncontrolled part of the Russian, uh, Ukrainian Russian border. So, what is the reason to block that if Russia keeps saying there is no inflow of weaponry, Russian troops, and mercenaries in Donbass? The only point is to retain the situation as it is and to try to use the situation further. Thanks a lot.